so it's really great to be here today. I was, I was saying to Jen, I've been uh, attending other talks uh, this week and also taking part in the coding challenges. It's great to have a chance to talk today. Um, I might look like a, I might look a bit sleepy. I, I actually am a bit sleepy because it's uh, early in the morning here in Australia. I'll do my best to keep you uh, up and interested. So today I'm going to talk a bit about uh, how the Posi Supercomputing Center in Australia is tackling the challenges of uh, uh, having quantum computing meeting supercomputing. Uh, so the Posi Supercomputing Center is one of the two uh, Tier One national centers in Australia. Uh, we are based in Perth, Western Australia. We were launched in uh, 2014, but the, the route lay back in the year 2000 when uh, we were just a, um, a joint venture between the local universities. Um, we are a critical infrastructure to the international project uh, in radio astronomy square kilometer array, uh, which is a huge uh, multinational collaboration. The, one of the two main radio telescopes will actually be based here in WA, just 800 kilometers north of Perth. And we got uh, quite a good amount of money uh, for that. Um, and we are about 60 staff right now uh, employed as a, um, at the POSI Center. We have uh, built over the years a number of national partnerships with different universities across the, all of the states of Australia. Uh, this also includes uh, state and, uh, and federal departments and um, a variety of um, research centers that are detached to universities, most in the medical field. But we have also built a network of international collaborations across various continents. This includes a number of uh, other supercomputing centers in this uh, region, like uh, the NSCC in Singapore, NASI in New Zealand, and the other center in uh, NCI in uh, Australia, NCI. Uh, but we also have collaboration in the States and uh, in Europe. And recently, we have started to build collaborations in the field of quantum computing. This includes quantum brilliance in Australia, and Xanadu in Canada, and uh, others. This is just a diagram to give you an idea of uh, what are the, the many moving parts, uh, the technical parts here at the Posit Center. So we have a, currently deploying a, a cloud system called Nimbus. Here on the left, then on the middle, the Topaz GPU cluster, which is a, an NVIDIA-based cluster, which we're actually about to, to decommission. Then we have some uh, radio astronomy focused uh, infrastructure related to the SKA international projects, such as the Inges nodes and, uh, and another dedicated GPU cluster for Garavola, and actually also some quite good amount of, uh, of uh, long-term storage, both in form of tape and of object storage, uh, totaling over 100 petabytes. But the, the gem here in the, in the infrastructure is actually Setonics, uh, on the, almost on the top left. Uh, we started to deploy it last year, and uh, when it will be fully deployed in, in a few months, it will be 30 times more powerful than our former systems put all together, uh, totaling almost 50 petaflops of uh, compute power. This is just uh, a, small, uh, a small view of the first phase of deployment of Setonis, which was just about three petaflops. But when it will be finished, it will kind of look like the, the picture here in the bottom will be uh, about eight racks of, um, of, of Cray nodes. Uh, powered by MD CPUs and GPUs. And um, during the testing that we performed late last year, we were able to, to benchmark it and we got it on the top 500 at SC22 in the States. We were named uh, the 12th, the 12th most, super, most powerful supercomputer in the world and uh, quite significantly the fourth greenest supercomputer. And we're going to talk about a bit more about that. Um, so we, over the years, here at we have de developed a number of uh, let's say it in quotes, green solutions to in our center. One of the most notable uh, aspects is actually the way we, we cool down our compute nodes. Uh, this, is, this makes use of geothermal cooling. Actually, we have a groundwater cooling system that uh, picks up water from an aquifer just below uh, the center, uses it to, to cool down the, the nodes, and then puts, puts the water back in the aquifer. Uh, just a, a few degrees uh, hotter, and in this way, we are able to save millions of liters of water every year for the for the cooling of our supercomputer. Uh, notably, we also chosen our new supercomputer, Setonics, as uh, uh, put by putting the green credentials as one of the the key aspects of the of the procurement. So, and in, 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 indeed, we we ended up with an AMD system because it was the uh, one of one of those that provided the the best. 
uh, flops uh, per watt uh, figure. Uh, we also have a, a rack of solar panels on the roof and on the walls of the center that uh, are not able to, to completely power the system but still offset the, the carbon footprint of, of our operations. Um, now, this, this is all I'm going to say today about the technical part. I would like to, to mention a bit a few of the of the other services and notable uh, projects we are involved uh, before uh, talking to you about our quantum roadmap. So the PACER pro program is a three-year uh, strategic pro uh, project of collaboration with Australian researchers and international researchers. So we have uh, brought on 10 projects with over 60 researchers with a $3 million investment. And uh, the idea was to provide strategic uh, early access to our newest uh, hardware to these researchers and actually also provide specialized technical support uh, from, from our team to help them uh, get up and running, but also crucially uh, uh, develop and optimize the software to run optimally on our newer supercomputer and then eventually also in other supercomputers of similar uh, with similar technologies. So this is, uh, this is ongoing right now, and uh, it's producing great output of software and, and publications. Uh, but one other notable uh, ongoing project we are uh, having here at POSI is, uh, is an internship program where we take uh, third-year university students and uh, allow them in the center for a couple of months uh, where they're able to carry out a project in uh, under supervision of university uh, researchers and professors. And this is our way, one of our ways where we, we're trying to, to make a, an impact by uh, basically training the next generation of researchers in, uh, in HPC. But let's now move to, to what's uh, probably the, the most aligned uh, part of this talk to this, uh, to this audience, so our, uh, our quantum uh, roadmap and uh, quantum activities. So we, uh, we have uh, recently established ourselves as a quantum supercomputing innovation hub here in Australia. So I've mentioned already some of the aspects that uh, make POSI relevant in the, in the scene. So the, our newest super, supercomputer, Cetonix, uh, collaborations with researchers and industries, uh, nationally and internationally, activities in the training and education uh, domain, and uh, our, uh, our, uh, our capabilities in terms of, uh, of people and skills. Uh, but the, the, uh, the key aspects uh, related to the quantum hub are also the, um, the, the goal to provide the researchers with early access to quantum technologies, both in the size of software and hardware. And uh, as part of this, we have uh, one of the partnerships, the first partnership we had was with Quantum Brilliance, uh, a local Australian company that develops room temperature diamond-based supercomputers. And uh, as an highlight of this, so. Uh, during uh, 2022, we, we deployed uh, here at the POSI Center uh, the first uh, on-site uh, in a deployment of a quantum uh, computer in an HPC center. And this is just a, a, um, the, the, the quick video of uh, the deployment of the machine. So being a, being a diamond-based uh, uh, room temperature quantum computer, we don't need any, any extra uh, cooling. Uh, infrastructure. It's basically just a, a server rack, and uh, the quantum computer itself, as you can see, is just uh, a bit larger than a normal uh, uh, compute node. This is now deployed here at POSI, and, uh, and as part of our quantum activities, we are working with the engineers from Quantum Brilliance to, uh, for instance, to analyze the, the environmental noise uh, and enable them to um, to tune their, uh, their setup in order to take, to take into account the environmental noise of a, of a real world white space uh, so that they, uh, the infrastructure can work properly. And uh, so this is part then of our quantum roadmap. And let me show you uh, here through, through this picture some of the key milestones that uh, has made part of this roadmap so far. So it all started around the year 2020. Yes? Thank you. Uh, in 2020, we, we started with just a series of quantum online seminars to get our uh, community of researchers uh, interested in the, in the domain. Then in 2021, we, we started a program called Quantum Pioneers, uh, partnering both with research, uh, researchers from university and industry uh, to provide early access to the Quantum Brilliance uh, emulator. And we presented the, the Quantum Supercomputing Hub at the SC Asia conference. Um, in 2021, 
we there was a deployment of uh, of uh, QBOS, the, the a stable release of the Python framework uh, to develop uh, um, quantum applications through quantum valence. Um, and then, so one notable milestone in uh, early 2022, there was the first round of POSI internships uh, dedicated to quantum computing and HPC. So we had a, a cohort of students that focused specifically on quantum algorithms and, uh, and use of the emulator. In 2022, a few months later, we also launched the POSI UWA Quantum Education Hub. So an educational hub, the first of its kind in Australia in partnership with the University of Western Australia here in Perth. Uh, again, to work and develop training programs and education programs to uh, educate and train the next generation of researchers to the, uh, to the use uh, and to the development and use of quantum algorithms and quantum software. Uh, a big notable milestone was actually in May 22 when the, uh, the deployment started of the quantum kit here in the POSI white space. So it's basically the video I showed you before with the installation of the room temperature diamond-based quantum computer by Quantum Brilliance. The, the next few months, so uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, uh, a phase of integration and monitoring, uh, for instance, to analyze uh, the environmental noise and, and tune the setup. Uh, at the end of 2022, there were the, the a demonstration of capability with the first uh, simulate uh, with the running of the first hybrid quantum classical simulation on the quantum kit. And what we're planning for the first part of, of 2023 is to provide researchers in Australia with, uh, with early access to the quantum kit. Um, possibly integrated with the rest of the of the infra infrastructure access here at POSI. Oh, and so this is just a summary of the uh, some of the activities at the Quantum Hub, uh, which I've already kind of mentioned to you. This is just a picture of the people involved uh, in the Quantum Education Hub. Um, some of them are from POSI, uh, some of them are from uh, UWA. And what you see in the middle of the picture is an educational quantum computer by IonQ. Um, uh, which is based on uh, NMR technologies on other room temperature quantum computers. It's not educational, it can scale up to more than uh, three, five qubits, but it's great for, uh, for demonstration purposes to our course of students. And the very last slide, uh, so in the immediate future, the more activities coming on. So we are increasing our presence at quantum events, such as uh, QHAC uh, these weeks. Uh, we are further exploring uh, other software frameworks to get uh, ourselves up, up to speed, and this includes actually the, the use of uh, Penny Lane by Xanadu. Uh, recently, there was a launch of a program called the UWA Quantum Girls, a nationally funded uh, STEM initiative to boost female participation in, in quantum, to training of, of, uh, of teachers and then high school students. And we are, uh, on the way, we are, we are seeing a, a, a great lineup of further collaboration and partnerships with, with both universities and uh, quantum vendors. Uh, so this is all for today. Uh, thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Marco. It's really it's really interesting to see that you're mentioning um, the importance of quantum computing literacy. I imagine that you have some interesting challenges with, uh, you know, sort of blending in quantum computing literacy and supercomputing literacy. Those are, I guess, fairly different uh, fairly different things. Do you find that that to be so? Yeah. Uh, oh yes, definitely. I mean, we, we need a completely different approach, as you as you probably know. The I mean, one of the challenges that uh, right now, to in order to to to, to use and develop uh, quantum applications, you basically need uh, almost a training in, in quantum physics. So this, I am I have a background in quantum chemistry, so I have not I don't have a big issue myself. But this is one of the key challenges for our researchers. I mean, there is a significant gap in uh, in concepts. Uh, in con conceptual understanding of, uh, of physics that needs to be bridged in order to enable them to to effectively develop quantum applications. And this is a big thing. It requires really a, a shift uh, in perspective uh, in the way computing is taught. Mm. And actually, to be honest, I saw some very interesting talks uh, in the previous week here at QAC. Uh, they were really impressive. Uh, and uh, actually, I've already ordered a couple of books that were presented here at QAC. So it was really great to get this type of input uh, during this, uh, this, uh, this initiative that you led, guys. Oh, I'm really glad you've been enjoying it. It's, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun on our end as well, of course. Um, so I do have some questions from uh, from the chat here to ask you as well. So uh, Andrew mm -hmm, sure. Lead asks, is there any calculation that has required all the power of this machine? And if so, what type of cap calculation? So I'm assuming he means uh, uh, the our Setonic supercomputer. Um, or, Seems reasonable. 
or the quantum kit? Because I mean, the, the quantum kit right now didn't mention that it, uh, it, its first iteration is a is a two qubit system. So this is uh, this is what quantum brilliance is giving uh, us, us uh, right now. So we we did run the, as I mentioned some uh, trial hybrid quantum uh, classical simulations, but as you can imagine, the size was pretty small. It, it was about uh, quantum chemistry uh, simulations that uh, that could run on. Uh, of moderate size, so that they could, or modest size, so they could run on the on the two qubit system. As regards cetonics, uh, yes, we do have simulations that can take the whole uh, system. Uh, typical examples that can scale very well to the whole number of uh, of, uh, of cores that we we provide uh, uh, in cetonics are uh, again quantum chemistry. We are one of the PACER projects, uh, one of the collaborations with research that we are ongoing to develop the code is actually uh, for a GPU accelerated. Uh, uh, next generation quantum chemistry code that, that is able to to scale extremely well up to thousands of GPUs. And it's probably the most notable example. But we have other cases such as uh, computational fluid dynamics applications. Although those ones mostly run on, on CPU only. Right. Yeah, I can uh, can imagine that. Um, the other question we had uh, very quickly, the last one is: uh, Are these NV centers? I imagine they're talking about the uh, the quantum brilliance mm -hmm. computer. Yes, they are in V-Centers, exactly. This is the type of technology that is underneath, yes. All right, awesome, okay. Um, that's all we have time for uh, in terms of questions right now. But um, no worries. I, uh, Marco, I think you're going to be on Discord after if anybody has some follow-up questions, is that correct? Yeah, sure, definitely. I will uh, I will be probably, maybe I'll fly half an hour or so, but then I will, I will be back online uh, and it will be available. Awesome. Uh, definitely. Yes. Well, folks, uh, if you've got any further questions, then you can uh, ask Marco on Discord. And uh, at this point, I'd like to say thank you so much, Marco, for being with us today. Thank you, everyone.